Madam Chair and Madam Commissioner Destinette, Mrs. Simpson, I'm sorry I have a cold, I hope you can hear me anyway. Um, I'm new in Parliament, but I have a background um, within um, the private sector and the energy industry. Um, I've been working for many years with uh, energy investments, different types of analysis, consumer behaviors, uh, and so on. And, and when I read your uh, instructions <coughs> where you have the um, goal to make, and I quote, to make sure that Europeans have access to affordable, secure, reliable, and clean energy. Uh, to my experience, I would say these goals are totally contradictory and very hard, and you will have to set priorities. And you have already answered a lot of questions on this theme, so I will actually put a, uh, quite a different questions. Being a woman uh, and from the energy industry, I read in your written answers that the share of women in the energy sector is on average 22% in the global oil and gas industry and 32% in renewable energy. And you're willing to work with this. And I wonder, what do you say about the reason to this and why do you consider it a problem? Madam Simpson. Thank you. Um, just a short comment about uh, the as uh, assumption that uh, affordable, secure, and uh, clean energy is uh, not possible. I do believe that it is because uh, uh, renewable energy um, comes from uh, local sources, and uh, and um, I know that, for example, where I do live during um, certain seasons, we will get uh, a very um, uh, cheap energy from Nordic uh, hydropower plants, and this is definitely uh, clean, affordable, and secure. Now, about uh, women's role, role in the uh, energy sector, I do believe that uh, in every sector, we should uh, remove burdens if they are there. And this is a very good example that uh, in traditional energy sector, there are not um, well, the difference be, uh, between uh, women and men are pretty obvious. But at clean energy sector, the new technologies, research, and um, and um, innovation, there are more uh, involvement also from both sexes. And this is one of the additional benefits uh, to move towards uh, renewables, according to my mind. Thank you. Follow up. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, well, if everyone could have um, <coughs> access to hydropower, we wouldn't have this problem at all, but that is not the case. So I think you will need to set your priorities. Uh, my question was, why do you consider it a problem? And what would you consider a good number? If it's 22% today, what would you say would be um, a fair and, and, and good number? Adam Simpson. Yeah, yes. Um, I don't uh, set this kind of targets. Uh, if I'm talking about um, future numbers, then I think that for all of us it is very important how many new jobs will be created because of um, our um, uh, uh, targets towards uh, climate neutrality. What kind of jobs these will be, which are um, new jobs, and uh, in that uh, perspective, I do believe that, uh, that uh, positions in, uh, in industry, but also in um, research and innovation are, um, are equally um, suitable for both sexes. So um, these kind of new jobs will be created if, uh, if Europe will stay in, in the leading position for, um, um, on our way to climate neutrality. And um, this is a thing we have, we have to keep in mind. Thank you. 
Thank you. Now, uh, 